Well, Jarvis, a lot of people are wondering where, when, and how to bet on the Falcons. And they can start figuring it out because you know what is 18 days away? Training camp. Yes. We're also seven Saturdays away from the start of college football. But you know what's going on right now? And the hottest team in baseball is getting it done in all eyes are on them. It's the Braves. Of course, they take on the Rays this weekend in a pivotal matchup that we'll talk about in a moment. But we got some good news on Thursday about Max Freed. He'll begin a minor league rehab assignment. It'll be Sunday. It'll be with Triple A Gwinnett. And the game is against Omaha at like 105. And for me, I think, and Braves country, I would say overall, that's just a good sign that he continues to progress, that he's getting that rehab assignment, and we're getting that much closer to getting an ace back. Yeah, and and that's going to be almost like you you going out and trading for somebody because you're talking about the Cy Young runner-up. You're talking about a guy who's been – we've been hearing how he's been thrown off to the side and been yes. kind of ramping up to this right now. And, you know, originally we thought that he was going to be August, you know, yes. before we saw uh, Max Free come back up. But, you know, and – um, but now it seems like maybe towards the end of the month, the middle, um, the end of the month, we may see him get that, you know, that that first start because um, the, the Atlanta Braves want to have him, you know, get a few starts under his belt before they um, bring him up, which make all the sense in the world because at yes. the end of the day, there's no rush because what nope. the, the the Braves have been what thirty six and seventeen since um he and Kyle Wright went out, so hey, they've been doing okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. they've, been, they've been they've been they've been holding it down. So I think that right. when you think about you know getting this guy back at the end of July around that time, like that is going to be huge for the Atlanta Braves. And I really feel like, you know, you talked about those differences in that 2021 team. Like you said, Ronald Cooney not being around. That's the exact opposite of that. He's playing at the MVP type level. And then you get Max Free right after the All-Star break, T. Like, I'm not concerned about this team falling off at any point. If if Max Free comes back healthy, we can say a 90% um, Max Free. The Braves are going to be the team we're going to be talking about in October for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be talking about them. And really, they're the team that we should be talking about right now. The Braves, of course, are headed to Tampa. It's a face-off against the Rays, a battle of, quote-unquote, baseball's best, the top two teams, right? <laughs> yes. Big quotation and, and, and marks the reason, there. <laughs> exactly. Those are some big quotations. And the reason I, I put that out there like that is not to sound homerish, but the numbers don't lie. I mean, you're 58 and 28. Right. And you've won 10 of your last 11. That's the Braves. Right. And then you look, you juxtapose that with the now number two team in baseball in the Tampa Bay Rays. They are 57 and 33. But most importantly, they are on a five game losing streak. They also lost their ace. He's on the IL for 15 days, McClanahan. So those are some things that could factor in. Meanwhile, you look at what Brian Snicker talked about, what he was able to do in that last game against the Guardians. He got just enough out of Soroka and got a whole lot out of Michael Tomkin to be able to really, really tinkle, tinker with and maneuver this pitching staff, the rotation leading up to the all-star break. So I asked the question, laying out that foundation of what the Braves are right now and what the Rays are right now. If the Braves win this series, what statement does that make? If any, heading into the all-star break, the fake midpoint of the season. But if the Braves don't win the series, what statement does that make? If any, um, to be honest with you, I think whether they win or lose this series, I think I'm going to feel the same way. They're the best team in baseball. Like at the end of the day, because you know, I'm I'm feeling the same way I felt like because you know how coming into that Marlins series, right? Like everybody's like, oh, Braves, this is a big series, make a big statement. No, Marlins got to prove to that they're they they're going to make it a statement because, and I feel like the Rays are in the same way. The Rays have to prove that they are. You know, yes. uh, the second team, second best team in the baseball in baseball. They all have to prove that they are real contenders because at the end of the day, the Braves got a World Series. They got two World Series under their belt and one back in 2021. And the Rays have been absolutely awful, you know, for a very long time. And they are finally competing with all these young players that they have, you know, uh, playing on well for them. Like you said, they lost the ace. That's a big thing. That's a big deal for a young team, right? Because at the end of the day, you know that, you know, when you have a, a young a young set of guys, but you also have a guy that can be a leader in that locker room, you know, and if that ace is gone now for going to be down for a quite time um, for for quite a bit of time, and then you're on a on a losing streak as well. All those things kind of 
turn in the Braves' favor, right? Yes. Not that they need it, but right. I feel like that's that work, that's going to work in the Braves' favor and kind of continue to be show that hey, we're the best team in baseball, and there's no one from from whether you're looking at that lineup one through nine, mm-hmm. no one can compete compete with them in the entirety of Major League. Right, and when you look at the stats, if you will, the stats don't lie, right? Right. Four hundred. 87 runs and the Rays edge him a little bit in that regard, right? With 494 runs, but in every other category hits getting the second base, getting the third base. Well, you already know home runs. They've knocked everybody out, out of the park in that care category as well. So everywhere that you look, um, your OPS, if you will, much higher, we're talking about 841 to 787. So you start to see some separation in some of the more important categories and what their pitcher brings to the table, even tonight, like, yeah, he's got a fastball, but we know what the Braves do with fastballs. Right. Yeah. So I, mean, I think that to me the is way, a long yeah, way. Exa- right, exactly. <laughs> just, just as the guardians <laughs> would happen yes. to them. Yeah. Indeed. In uh, that first inning. And that was even not even with the long ball. And that's why I wanted to, kind of make note of the number of hits that they had as well as that OPS, right? Because that those are the numbers that start to kind of distinguish them from what the Rays are doing. And I think the other thing is this, and we'll see, because I'll I'll tell you this much. I think that with the Braves, not to say the Rays aren't on a mission, but I still feel like there's something about what happened last year. We don't talk about it a heck of a lot. They never talk about it. But I still say there's a motivating factor there. And I'm with you. I feel like whether the Braves win the series or lose the series, I don't really matter. It doesn't really matter to me. I don't really care. I'm more focused on as long as it's not a sweep and as long as the Braves are competitive, like we tend to see them be even in a close game where they play it out either down to the end or extras, I am good. And most importantly, for the arms to remain, like you said, if they happen to get Max Freed back late in July, that'd be a wonderful thing. If the arms can just stay steady for him, right? If Charlie Morton can give him hopefully six innings, and if he can get uh, what six or seven out of uh, Spencer Strider, we know that he totally can go for broke. Yes, yes. He, can go, yes. <laughs> he can go. Yeah, <laughs> not concerned. <laughs> no, like at all. So those are the things that I'm kind of thinking about as well that I want to see because although you will get the All Star break, if you will, the other piece there is what happens to those arms, kind of before you get to the break so that you get there comfortably and in a healthy way. Yeah. And that's the thing, right? When you, like you said, you, Charlie Morton, Spencer Strider, Bryce Elder, right? And those Bryce have been Elder, the yes. three, yeah. Those have been the three most consistent guys that you have, you know, after that, you know, it's kind of been a, or, or spin the wheel of young guy who want who wants to have a chance. Jared Schuster, you know, AJ Smith Schauber, you know, Mike Soroka, you know, yes. trying to get get his life together, you know, and it seems like he's on his way back. And I yeah. I'm so rooting for him. I ain't mean for it to come out like that, but like I am rooting for this guy. So when you have those three on the mound and Morton, Strider, and, and Elder, those are guys that, you know, two of them are all stars T. So I think that, you know, the Rays are going to find themselves running into a nice little bit of a buzzsaw because at the end of the day, these bats are smoking. Like they said, they are the number one scoring team in the first inning. So if those – so you can give that, that that comfortability comes in when those guys come to the mound because they know more than likely they're going to have somewhat of a lead, whether yeah. they're leading out or they actually – you know, or going into the bottom of the inning. So I, I think that's um that what gives me comfort. And I feel like, like I said, the Rays, y'all better get your, you better strap up because yeah. this is going to get real. Uh, um, it's going to get real, real fast. Yeah, because when you look at the hitting numbers, the Braves are leading in seven of the nine categories. And when you look at the pitching numbers overall, the Braves are ahead of Tampa as well, just in terms of wins, just a little bit ahead there. But in terms of getting quality games, getting starts, getting saves, innings pitched, whip, all of it, the Braves are in a better space. So I do think as much as we want the bats to be what they are, and especially in the beginning, right? So that those pitchers have the confidence that, hey, they're getting the run production that they're going to need. I feel like the Braves can also be confident that in just about every statistical category from a pitching staff perspective, they also best the Rays. But we we shall see. This is going to be a very, very interesting and intriguing matchup heading into the All-Star break. Tell us what you guys think as well, our everydayers. Drop us some comments in the chat on YouTube. 
We want to know about that. What do you think about the DeJounte Murray trade uh, extension? Excuse me. That was one where speaking of that, there were, there was word just 48 hours ago that he was going to be a part of a trade. And now we're looking at him as being a mainstay in the Hogs backcourt. Let us know on YouTube. And of course, download ATL day ones, wherever you get your podcasts.